Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Um, I want to show you guys the sign-up process for a service called Licked. It's a really, really cool website, licked.co, and it's basically a website that allows you to use copyrighted music on your YouTube videos. It's been something I've been meaning to check out for a while because on a lot of my videos, in order to avoid copyright strikes, um, if there's any music that like I get incidentally in the background, what I'm doing is filling in with music from the YouTube audio library. It's not necessarily always the best music and it's not music that really fits the footage so much. Uh, so we've meaning to sign up for the service for a while, but the first time I looked at it, I got kind of a bit freaked out by the terms and conditions. I thought I was giving this uh, service access to, you know, like all the details with my account. Um, and I'm one of those people that really cares about when I integrate with the third app, I wanna see like what data does it have access to. So I wanna talk to you guys through the sign-up process and I'm making this video, there's other videos about Clicked out there on the internet, uh, but I'm doing this one specifically for those who are like me are kind of a bit edgy about giving terms and conditions. So firstly, let me show you guys what I'm gonna be working with. So I put up a video on this YouTube channel a few days ago, there's a, a coffee shop, um, near me in Jerusalem and they do Turkish sand coffee. Uh, so I just re-edited that. I just kind of changed around the order of the shots a little bit. It's really, I think, nice footage of uh, the coffee, Turkish coffee being be being brewed traditionally in the sand, a bit more of that. Then the cup comes in at the end. Basically all the B-roll I grabbed from the shot and there's a little fade out there at the end. Uh, so it's a one minute and 20 second clip. So it's gonna be pretty short. Now in terms of what sort of music I'd want to go along with that. If I went into YouTube audio library, um, I could definitely find something like Arabic theme, but I'm gonna look for something maybe, I'm thinking like Nancy Adram, um, who else was I thinking about? Uh, Amri Diab's a little bit too, uh, too uh, old, old school, but maybe something like, even like something very classic Arabic like Fairuz or something from Awa, which is a modern Israeli band. So I've got a few different thoughts in mind for um, what I could have to fill in these this music. Another thing when I'm doing adding video to music is I always, and I edit using a software called Caden Live on Ubuntu, um, I'll often apply a gain filter to the track where my video audio is and just like crank it down all the way to let's say 2% and I'll play around with this just so sometimes I think it's nice and especially in segments once you apply it across the audio track here on Caden Live so that's all gonna be at, let's say, 5%, so pretty quiet. But I can then go into an individual clip and, and tweak that gain adjustment a little bit. Um, so anyway, let's go now over to the sign-up process. So here is Licked, and I'm gonna say, it says all the music a creator needs. Tell me, I don't, I don't wanna be on the newsletter, I'm just gonna accept the, so usually I don't, so this is why I kind of chickened out the first time. I'm generally very skeptical of doing syndicated sign-up processes because now Licked has access to my Google account in some way or another. Um, but when you're just doing sign-up, I think it's pretty much just used for, it uh, just gives them your name. So, so, so far I'm comfortable with it, right? It has, my, um, it has my email address and I've signed up through Google and I can log into Licked. So that's the first integration I got there. I was like, that's fine. But it's gonna need a bit more than that because the way this service works is as follows. Um, it's going to integrate with your YouTube channel. So the YouTube is a separate service than your Google account. So now we need to connect it to my YouTube channel. And it's going to um, give, when you select music and uh, pay a license for a music, uh, for a piece of music, it's then going to deal with any copyright strikes on your behalf. So it needs to be integrated. Now this is where I got cautious or just again, chicken out. So I'm gonna go ahead now and select the YouTube channel I want to use here. So I'm gonna go into uh, connect channel. And now I've jumped down towards the end of my channel list. I have a few channels I just use for uh, testing purposes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna click here into uh, the one that you're watching, my main YouTube channel. Now, this is what I want to um, draw your attention to because the videos I saw for signing up for Licked really, really glossed over this and this for me is very important. What exactly does uh, permission does Licked ask for? So um, it's not as bad as I first thought. It needs to view, it's, it's requesting view permissions for your YouTube account and also YouTube analytics. Now the reason it needs these uh, permissions is that uh, Licked is going to be taking in your channel data from YouTube in a read-only fashion and based on your view count, it's going to be charging you for the license. So in other words, if you're a super popular YouTube creator, it's gonna charge you more. If you're a small account like me, it's gonna charge you less for 
licensed music. So I'm the type of person that, as I said, I'm on the cautious end of uh, all stuff regarding web security and integrations. I actually always read through these pretty carefully. So maybe it's changed or maybe I was just uh, being more conservative last time. You can click on the icon here and it says, view your videos and playlists and view your YouTube activity. So that to me is fine. Um, it's fine that it can view my videos and playlists because I've got nothing um, you know, sensitive up here, let's say and it can view my analytics and you can get a bit more info here, uh, pretty much what it says. So that to me is fine. What I wouldn't want is if Lict had the ability to delete videos um, on my account, because that always freaks me out if somehow Lict is hacked and Link, uh, Lict is hacked and Lict is integrated with my YouTube channel, they could uh, wipe it of all the videos. So um, these permissions are fine. And once you have them, by the way, it's possible in Google security to revoke your permissions to a third party app. Um, and they can't just like randomly ask for more permissions. So I'm actually growing more comfortable with the process. So I'm going to click on allow. And we'll just wait for a few seconds for the integration to work. And now my channel's added. I guess it's going to take a little bit of time because I have 600 subscribers and it's not showing up right now. Um, and that's the first stage of the process complete. So I'm just continuing to show you guys the sign up process in detail because of the fact that uh, this was not uh, something I saw in other videos. It's going to ask me for uh, my name and my country of residence is Israel. Uh, and I'm going to accept the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. And uh, I like this, they're transparent about why they're requiring uh, every piece of information. I'm assuming it's because for tax purposes, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, delve any deeper into that. I've already glanced over the TS TNCs and they're fine, fine with me. So I'm gonna click further now and go to uh, plans and I'm going to choose for the pay-as-you-go option because this is something um, that I only want to uh, use occasionally and I'm happy to just say okay I need this long song I want to pay for this license and uh, and I don't need a monthly subscription because I'm doing this only now and again um, it looks like they offer from uh, 10 pounds sterling this is a London based company uh, so if you're going to be using this a ton um, I guess it would be cheaper to uh, sign up for a subscription service I'm gonna go just with the uh, pay-as-you-go option. So I'm gonna click on this, and it's, I guess you get less uh, music as well, perhaps, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm gonna click on, on uh, pay-as-you-go. All right, so my plan's now active. So to get this far um, wasn't, uh, wasn't really that hard. Just to, just to recap for those who are uh, similarly concerned about data stuff, um, I, I needed to sign up. There is no option to sign up with a, uh, just with your you know, uh, username and password, which was always my preference but it does make sense in this case because it has to integrate with your YouTube uh, channel. And in order to have a YouTube channel, you have to have a Google account. So um, I guess that's reasonable. There's, there's no way to get around that. So now I'm going to try to license my first song. Um, and uh, here's my rate card. So this is telling me now based upon, um, I guess my popularity on YouTube, how much I'm gonna be paying. So our standard license allows creators to use any licked music in a single video that will be uploaded to YouTube. Your license is granted in perpetuity for the life of your video, so you'll never have to take it down. As always, all licenses on are copyright claims free on YouTube. So basically, um, after it's integrated with my channel, it's now calculated my rate card, and I have standard, sponsors, and essential. So standard is, oh, we already did that, uh, excuse me. So six pounds is, you know, it's gonna be very depending on the, you know, uh, where you are in the world and what your local currency is and the exchange rate, all that. Uh, for, because I'm just assuming most people always watching YouTube videos are US based for whatever reason. It's about 10 bucks. So if you're going to be using two or three tracks in a YouTube video, it might get a little bit, uh, you know, more expensive. But if you're just using one uh, music track uh, throughout your one video, um, I think $10, uh, $10 uh, to license that track is uh, is very reasonable. The second thing to say is that it's, uh, it's valid for one video. So you can't use this um, it's licensed to a particular video once it's uploaded to YouTube. So you can't just go and use this, say, okay, I have paid for a license for this song and I'm gonna use the song, drop it into uh, five or 10 of my videos. It's on a per video uh, basis. So this license to be crystal clear is granted in, per in perpetuity and Lict music licensing is definitely complicated, but Lict really takes out the complication because they're striking uh, the, uh, the, the copyright agreements with the big music labels and they're just giving you the simple system of connect your YouTube channel. Uh, we're gonna give you a rate card, tell you uh, how much it's going to cost, um, etc. If it's a sponsored video, it's gonna be more. Um, so if you're being sponsored by a brand to promote their products, 
um, and that you have to declare that on YouTube anyway. So if it, if it is that, it's gonna be actually jump up by 10 times. Um, I've never done a sponsored video yet, so it's gonna be a six, uh, six pound charge for me. So I'm gonna go now and jump into the library and uh, pick some music to accompany my random video of uh, somebody making a cup of Turkish coffee. All right, so I said it wasn't gonna be stereotypical and use an Amar Diab song in, a, uh, in an Israeli produced uh, YouTube video with an Arabic theme, but that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, I couldn't find some of the artists. I wasn't super impressed, I must admit, um, by the choice of uh, selection there. I did type in uh, some Hebrew characters looking for remixes and I couldn't find those. I tried to few Israeli artists. Uh, they weren't there either. Um, even regarding this uh, pretty well-known song from uh, Amr Diab, and I'm not gonna play it because I'm not gonna license that track for this video, just for the coffee one. Um, this was actually, I didn't find the original. So this is actually a remix uh, by a DJ, but I actually quite like this remix. So this is what I'm gonna use, and I'm only gonna be using a, uh, it's a one minute 20 video as I showed you. So just using a small amount of that. The user interface is really pretty intuitive. Uh, you can set up a little uh, like list. So if you want a short list, browser library and pick out a few songs you might want to use on your next video, you can do that. I'm going to click on the license button and that's pretty nice. They give you 25% off your first track. So the first track's only going to cost me, uh, do, 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 don't, 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 uh, don't observe how bad my mathematics are. That's like $4.50. So, uh, four pounds 50. So it's probably going to be five or six bucks rather than 10. So, uh, that is quite useful. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and pay for the license for this track and then download it and add it into my uh, video timeline. I think that's how this is gonna work. We're gonna see, find out, for, find out for, for myself. All right, so I'm at the checkout phase now and I'm hoping that we're getting near the end here. Now, as you can see, it's added my license for um, Amar Diab's Habibi remix by uh, Budi Aridi and it's a standard license for uh, six pounds sterling. It did say there was gonna be a two pound discount, but I'm not seeing that being applied. It's still saying total to pay six bucks or six dollars, but whatever, uh, six pounds even. Um, but what I wanted to do in this video is really just kind of go on a deep dive and show you guys all the stuff that you might be, uh, you might have not seen in other videos. I'm gonna click on the view license button and this is gonna bring up really important information about exactly uh, what you can do here. So as it says, look, look read, read this carefully to understand how it works. Allowed platforms YouTube. So that's important to know you can't buy download this track, uh, you know, upload it to YouTube and then try to do another cut for Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, right? Because those are uh, platforms that are not covered by this license. It's only specifically saying you can use it on YouTube. Restrictions, religion, charities, politics, military, tobacco, firearms, pornography. So if your video is regarding any of these topics, so if this was a video promoting smoking or whatever, uh, you couldn't use this, uh, this, uh, this video. Pornography, it couldn't go on YouTube anyway. Um, I'm not too sure these ones might be a little bit more tricky politics because I live in Israel and I do some videos about the political situation here. I'd have to get more clarity reg regarding that. Uh, usage also says no remixing. So that's important to know too. So I can't download this music, which happens to be a remix itself and then remix it. But even if it wasn't a remix, um, I couldn't then like, you know, make my own remix. Um, and then it's a lot of verbiage. That's good enough for me to know uh, the key details. And then by clicking on the audio icon, it's gonna be an MP3 uh, file, which is um, okay. Uh, it's usually better to get a WAV file, but that's uh, whatever. So publish your YouTube videos as unlisted or public. So uh, that licked can clear your copyright claim. So that's totally uh, fine. I'm gonna put this up publicly and um, now uh, let us uh, continue with this. So payment's very easy. You can either use Google Pay or uh, you can also use Stripe or uh, you can just enter your credit card info. So because I have my uh, credit card on my uh, Google Play account, it's pulled it up and I'm just gonna go ahead and pay my six, uh, six pounds. So it looks like I did get a discount. So that's nice, your first, uh, because six pounds is cheaper than uh, six pounds sterling. Uh, so yeah, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of a uh, cheap, cheaper price for my first uh, purchase, which is nice if you wanna just uh, test it out like I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead now and click the pay button and uh, pay for this. All right, brilliant. So that's gone ahead and it says, thank you for your purchase. And I can view my license uh, download track. I also have a little uh, referral code here. So that's nice if you want to recommend. I'm gonna pop this in the video description just ju ju just to be shameless. Um, I can click on view license and see like the exact um, license that I have here. It's gonna have a unique license number. Um, as you can see, it's got the song 
and it's got the ISRC ID and it's got my channel and my unique channel identifier there and calculated average video views, 50,000 views per video. That is way, 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 way wrong. Um, I think only some of my videos got uh, 1,000. So that might be something I need to talk to them with support if I'm gonna be using this. Um, but uh, whatever, for the amount of money um, uh, that that costs, I wouldn't be uh, so concerned about that. But just to show you that it gives you the full details of the agreement you've concluded and your ISRC number there. So that's really important. Okay, um, it doesn't end there. There's a bit more to do. So I have under licenses now, I've got my track and there's a little button here for view video attribution. And uh, this is where I'm saying it's a little bit misleading and this is just my feedback for Lick because um, I think they need to make this more clear. You have to do this. Um, adding this credit to your video description is a must. Not only is it part of your license terms, but crediting contributes to uh, healthy artist exposure and shows your support for the music industry. I mean, that's that's pretty fair. Um, I'm definitely proud to be, uh, you know, uh, using this legally. I'm not doing it just for, because I wanna support artists, which I do, by the way, uh, but also because I don't wanna get a copyright strike, but both are applicable. Um, so you have to copy and paste this into your video description. And um, I guess that makes sense because when I post my little coffee video, um, I'm gonna have that description and then it's gonna link back uh, to it. So that is so far so good. And now I can download my audio and add it to my video editor. Uh, so I understand that. So this is good. It's again telling you here that look, uh, you need to add the licensing attribution. So in fairness, they do kind of let you know, but I still think it could be a little bit clearer. Um, I'm gonna click download track and that's pretty much it. As you can see, I've got my like eight megabyte uh, download there finished and I'm gonna go ahead now and pop this into my video. Okay, so because this is mostly like an experimentary project, I haven't like been super amazing about doing this, but I've just got the uh, coming in fading in with the chorus fading out. And then I've just uh, reduced the gain on the actual um, audio for most of this video so that it's still there a little bit in the background, but it's not gonna be distracting. And that's it. I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, render this out and uh, upload it. Okay, I'm in the homepage of my YouTube studio now, which if you are a YouTuber, I'm sure is one of the most familiar places on the internet to you as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and find my file. Here it is, Sand Coffee in Jerusalem in my video renderers folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, begin uploading that. I just created a uh, custom thumbnail. And now, of course, what I'm gonna need to do is uh, go back into Link, uh, Licked and um, we're going to then uh, copy over the video attribution, take a second to load, and I'm gonna just pop that into the description. I'm gonna just write a description for the actual uh, video itself, and I'm just, just gonna put this here, and to keep it short, I'm gonna get rid of this bit of my video description. So I have uh, gone ahead and added the thumbnail uh, that I created. Um, I've added the music license, I copied and pasted it straight out of Licked, added it there at the bottom. Um, I've given the video a, a title and just a one-line description. And I'm gonna set the uh, visibility to publish and I'm gonna click on uh, public and I'm gonna click on publish. It's gonna unfortunately be a slow upload because um, I have to, at the moment, use a um, hotspot uh, for a specific reason. So I'm gonna do this now and uh, wait for this video to go online and I hope that there will be no problems. After I purchased the license, I also got this email saying that your license um, is ready to use and it gives me instructions um, about what to do. Do not set your video to private and it gives me that license as well um, and a link to it. So yeah, all in all, uh, really happy with this experience. So just as I was preparing to render and export this video and say everyone use Licked, this tool is amazing. I logged into my YouTube studio and bear in mind if I only had this on YouTube for like, um, I'm gonna say five minutes maybe and that's something if you've ever dealt with YouTube. I had once I recorded a friend's wedding, um, live streamed it and it was like on YouTube and it got a copyright, not just for the song, this is something that people don't uh, realize that the melody's copyrighted, like the band doing a cover was actually detected. These algorithms are freakishly good. So I must say this is actually really disappointing because I thought that putting that little snippet would uh, not result in the strike in the first place. Uh, it's not a strike, it's a copyright claim, there's a difference. Um, so you can see here, um, in if I go into my Turkish coffee one, Everything else on my channel is fine, but there is a copyright claim on the video I've just uploaded. So it says, your, vi your video is ineligible for monetization due to a copyright claim. Review details and dispute the claim if you believe this is an error. Revenue is held separately uh, until a dispute's resolved. See details. So what you can see here is that they have zoned in on the right song. It is indeed 
on behalf of Booty um, Aridi, but this has been, as you saw in the video, legally licensed. So now you're gonna see how this can be resolved. So I've done what anyone else would do in this situation. I put into Google, um, I've had a copyright claim my video anyway, and I got this um, updated, the support resource. It was only written four days ago, so it's pretty fresh. From Lick Support's team, it says, uh, don't worry, we've got your back, okay? I mean, that's fine, but like, yeah, I would say this is kind of disappointing, to be honest. Uh, firstly, it's quicker and easier for us to help if you haven't disputed the claim, so don't dispute, so I'm not gonna do anything. Um, you know, given that my YouTube channel is monetized, it wouldn't have made a big difference as it wasn't a copyright strike, it was just a claim. But nevertheless, it would kind of defeat the whole point of using this, so I am going to uh, try to do something about it. Um, it says the majority of claims in YouTube Studio will automatically be cleared within 30 minutes by our Vouch software. Once resolved, YouTube Studio will update and you'll also receive an email notification from us. So um, the claim happened really quickly and it's saying that within 30, sec 30 minutes, uh, this, uh, this software they have Vouch should actually um, legitimize um, and then automatically take that away. If you're still experiencing issues, it says to get in touch with their support team at this email with each of the video link and the license ID. And it says they'll do that. And the turnaround time for releasing a claim is up to four hours on a weekday and uh, 48 hours at the weekend. Uh, any ad revenue that's been held during this time will be paid to you. So basically YouTube holds, if you have a copyright claim, I always get claim and strike mixed up. Um, the system is pretty slick, you know, on YouTube system. In other words, they're gonna held, hold the money in a crew. They're gonna hold uh, your side of the revenue or sorry, all the revenue is still being counted if you are already monetized and they're keeping it in a crew. But once the uh, claim is released, they're gonna release it back to you. So um, it's not the worst, but I would say, yeah, it's uh, it's also not the best start to this process. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for 30 minutes now and see what happens and whether I indeed have to contact support or if this will clear by itself. Okay, so I've waited the requisite 30 minutes during which uh, Licht said that the majority of claims are going to be automatically resolved because their uh, system, which is called Vouch, and that interfaces apparently with YouTube's um, um, AI system content ID that automatically detects uh, matches with music and thereby issues copyright claims. Remember, copyright claims, not strikes. Unfortunately, uh, that email has not arrived. And if I go into my YouTube dashboard, you can see I'm just going to refresh to be 100% fair to uh, Licked. I methodically timed it. It's been now 32 minutes and you can see there's still a copyright claim uh, showing against that video. So um, what do I have to say? Firstly, I imagine that this is going to be resolved. Like I don't think it's not going to work. I think uh, it'll probably be resolved by itself. But at this point, as I said, it's supposed to, or the majority will happen within 30 minutes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and email their support people with my license and with my video URL in order for them to look into that. Um, I was expecting, I have to be honest, I did not go into this video expecting it not to work. I, To me, it looked like a brilliant service. I'm all in favor of legally using music that, you know, fair for the artists and uh, YouTubers can use more than what's in the YouTube audio library without having to worry about copyright. First impressions make a really, really big difference. And given that this was the very first video that I uploaded, I followed all the instructions carefully and I've still received a copyright claim. I have to be honest, I'm not that impressed. Now, all the videos on YouTube I've seen have said that, you know, this is a, um, this is a great product and I haven't encountered other people. So maybe this was uh, good to make just to show that it looks to me that there are some kinks in their system that whatever interface, I'm sure it's probably out of their control, but at the end of the day, they're in the business of uh, supposed to be protecting people from copyright claims and strikes. So given that my very first time using it resulted in that is again, uh, not so impressive. So would I recommend it? Um, or would I, would I use it again, assuming this does get resolved? resolved favorably. Um, I probably would, but I'd be less enthusiastic because I don't want to be, you know, um, writing emails every single time I try to license a video or uh, watching copyright claims come in and hoping they're gonna be resolved. I kind of wanted something that I just said it and forget it to use that American language. And it doesn't look to me like um, at the moment the product is at that point. This of course has just been my experience. Other people uh, have apparently used this totally successfully without getting that. Um, the uh, product is nice. The library didn't look that great to me. Um, I am, yeah, I was looking for some relatively obscure Middle Eastern music, but I didn't find uh, Israeli Arabic music in there. And uh, again, on my first time using it, 
I got a copyright claim, so that's not great either. I um, hope this video was useful, and if you would like to get more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and uh, thank you guys very much for watching.